meet, but it is uh, it is required these days. Um, I have uh, keep in mind that everybody in your household knows that this part of your house is on public TV. So uh, uh, be sure everybody's aware. Uh, <coughs> now this is a script uh, prepared by our town council, and I guess used across the uh, state now. It's very popular. Uh, so this is Al Tosti, chairman of the finance committee. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So first of all, I'm gonna go through a roll call. Uh, please uh, yell out here uh, if you are here as I go through it. So Grant Gibbion. Here. Shane Bondell. Here. John Ellis. Here. Present. John Ellis? Here. Okay. Here. Carolyn White? No. Mary Margaret? Yes. Frank Lamont? Okay. Arif Federa? Yes, I'm here. Jonathan Wallet? Here. Charlie Foskett? Here. Brian Beck? Here. Pete Howard? Here. Shailene Crawford Prokes? Here. Here. Daryl Hammer? Here. John Deist? Here. Alan Jones? Here. Annie LaCourt? Here. Bill Keller? Here. Myself, Alan Tosti, here. George Koser, here. Christine Deschler, here. Dean Carmen, here. Dave McKenna, here. Liz Diggins, here. Okay, so Liz Diggins is our staff member, our executive secretary. Uh, I'd also like to. Uh, uh, check and make sure the following presenters are here. Uh, uh, Dr. Kathleen Bodie. Here. And Michael uh, Mason. Here. And Sandy Poor, our deputy here. town manager. I'm here. Okay, good. Uh, good evening. This open meeting of the Finance Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. Due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the coronavirus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the coronavirus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings as, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Furthermore, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access to is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberation of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless su such participation is required by law. <coughs> Excuse me. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting of the Finance Committee is convened via Zoom as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and uh, take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Meeting, all supporting meeting materials have been provided, uh, have been provided members of the body are available on the town website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda uh, unless I note otherwise. Meeting business and ground rules. We are now turning, the, uh, turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do, permit me to uh, go over some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. 
I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, I will call for questions or comments. Annie, could you explain to the members how they will be recognized? The best way for you to be recognized is to either enter a message to everyone in the chat box or on the participant list, raise your hand. So if you haven't figured out yet how to raise your hand, now is the time you need to find your menu and open up the participant list and you should have a menu at the bottom that allows you to raise your hand. And Alan Jones and I will watch for hand raises and try to get everybody in order. Um, we will certainly uh, take you in order if you chat your questions in the chat box. Any questions? Okay, and then Annie or Alan will let me know who the next person is on the on the list. Okay, when those are finished, I will call for a motion in a second. Um, and again, Annie will uh, or Alan will see who raises their hand. I'll call for the motion and then I'll call for a second. Further discussion will then be allowed following by a roll call vote, which is legally required. Uh, further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. Uh, okay, so those are, those are the basic those are the basic rules on how I conduct the meeting. The first item on the agenda uh, is the uh, school budget. And for that, I'd like to turn this over to uh, Kathleen Bodie, Dr. Kathleen Bodie, our school superintendent, and Michael Mason, our uh, assistant superintendent for finance. So, uh, Kathy. Good evening, everyone. It's, it's nice to see you even, even this way. Actually, it's sort of nice I can just scroll down and see everybody's, um, everybody's picture. Um, thank you again for, uh, again this year, for inviting us to talk about our budget with you. The, uh, the PowerPoint that you have on your screen, um, I don't know, is the proposed budget for the, the school committee's proposed FY21 budget, which was approved by the school committee on March 12th of this year. Um, most of the initial slides are, are um, things that you've already seen before, but let me just go briefly through what the agenda will be tonight. We'll just do a quick overview of the mission statement goals and vision, uh, the, the school committee members, the budget development, and who are the key contributors to that, which includes the process and timeline as well, and then the budget priorities and highlights. The actual FY21 budget information will be presented by Mr. Mason, and then we'll talk a little bit about how this relates to the five-year plan. So starting, when, when we begin a budget process, oh, well, let me see, the first slide here is actually giving you uh, the school committee members, which are on your PowerPoint. And uh, then followed by that are the budget development key contributors, which include um, pretty much everyone, everyone in central, the central office, as well as our principals and uh, the leadership team of curriculum leaders as well as some um, other contributors in the business office, which you can see on the, on the next slide. When we craft and think about a budget, one of the, what we definitely want to make sure is true about a budget is it is consistent and furthers our mission, as well as our vision of our student as learner and student as global citizen. And those, the vision and the, and the uh, mission are there on the slides for you to read. I won't read, I won't read them tonight. As we look to next year, um, the budget, FY budget 21 is consistent with the, with the work we have done on a five year budget. I talk a little bit more, more about that later. But if, when we developed the five-year budget, we were looking at a number of areas, certainly uh, addressing enrollment, 
which is a large part of all of our, our budgets in the last few years. Uh, what we need to do in order to uh, narrow the achievement gap between students in special groups that um, are not necessarily achieving at the level of the aggregate. We want to make sure that we're, in, we're improving our library and digital learning instruction. We, as a result of enrollment growth, we are in need of more administrative support, which has been fairly flat for a number of years while enrollment has continued to grow, particularly at our elementary schools, in which uh, several of them now are over 500 students. Um, we also want to continue investing in reading and mathematics support at both the elementary and middle school. Again, going back to uh, our goal of narrowing the uh, achievement gap between students in our district. Those represent really the, the budget priorities and highlights of the budget and all of the individual items that you will see that have been added uh, to the FY21 budget as compared to the FY20 budget. When we uh, go through this process, uh, the, the development of the FY20 budget actually started last summer. It's, it's a long process and um, it begins with really assessing what our needs are as we move forward. Um, this process goes through pretty much the whole fall. Um, at the end of December, uh, principals and curriculum leaders present to the school committee what they see as the needs. And in addition to administrators presenting, we also have um, uh, members of the leadership team for the Arlington Educator Association, as well as people of the administrator union as well. This process goes through, I'm trying, I'm doing two different PowerPoints at the same time here. I think that's what's a little confusing. So this process here will go into January in which the school committee um, states what their priorities are for the next budget. And we have an open, we have a hearing. Well, there is a reach out to different groups within the community as well over during this period of time. And in March, the budget is, is formally voted on by the school committee. We had um, pretty, pretty consistent um, goals for the budget for FY21, uh, administrators, teachers, and the school committee. I think at this point, can we go on to the next slide? Yeah, the funding yeah. sources. Michael, yes. do you want to go from here? Yes, I'd like to comment um, that this, that this, the, the PDF version that was also provided will probably provide more uh, data. The, the Google version that's being presented is missing some items. Um, so for example, on the slide, there are some numbers missing to give you some relative idea of what we're trying to show the context, but I'll try my best to explain. So part of- you want me to do you want me to switch to the PDF? Yes, that'll be great. Okay, let me get out of here. Uh, the question is, where do I have the PDF? Give me one sec. You might want to stop projecting your screen if you... No, it's okay. I've only got stuff up that's relevant to the, the meeting. The, the PDF Sam tab. Uh, yeah, I could go there. It's up there in a good, near the beginning. Is this the PDF you're referring to, Michael? No, that's the, the budget document. It's okay. We can, yeah, it was, I sent it to, in the email, but it's okay. We can continue off this and I'll try to my best to explain. Okay. Uh, excuse me, Annie. It might be at the very end of that document. From the SAM document? All right, let's see if it's there. If it was something that we received today, it's in there at the end of the no. original of his original document. 
Okay, let's just take a minute and give me a chance to grab it because I know I have downloaded it. So I just need to find it. One thing we're going to have to learn about this entire process is patience. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay, I believe. Does this look like what you're looking for, Michael? So this last is what I have. Email that Annie of. sent. Uh, Listen. Last email. That's the only PDF I've got. Yeah. Um, the only all the alternative is if you download it and open it in actual PowerPoint, it will show everything. Google just has a, a way of turning PowerPoints. Uh, I don't have PowerPoint on my desktop. Okay, well, I'll explain it as best as I can, and we'll go from there. Don't 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 worry about it. Annie, look today at six twenty-two. An email that. from Liz. Yeah, but there's a PDF there. on the PowerPoint. Okay, hang on one second. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, that's the PowerPoint. This is the PDF. Open this with Chrome. Okay, this is what I got. Okay. All right, much better. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. So part okay. of developing uh, any budget is understanding how the operations will be funded. Um, and this slide, uh, the funding sources, shows you how Arlington Public Schools have been, uh, have been funded historically from fiscal 2016 to fiscal 2020, and how we anticipate to be funded in fiscal 21. Uh, the graph shows two different percentages. The lower percentage shows how much Chapter 70 state aid has changed year to year that the town of Arlington receives. The higher percentage is, is the change of all the funds year to year that we incorporate into our budget. Uh, in fiscal 21, we anticipate, uh, fortunately, through our, our formula that the town has, uh, about 6.5% year over year. We can go to the next slide in terms of what we anticipate for our revenues. Uh, this slide shows uh, revenues compared to the FY20 budget to the FY21 proposed or requested budget. The town appropriation is the funding that is allocated from the town based on the established town formula. The, the town appropriation includes a local contribution from the town in an amount provided from the state, uh, uh, which is through the chapter 70 formula. Uh, it also shows that the grant revenues, uh, which is hard to predict or project what we will receive in fiscal 20. Therefore, we have level funds, which is showing a zero change in funding. Note, uh, one thing to note this year is that circuit breaker revenue has decreased. Uh, we base our circuit breaker revenue based on what we would have received in fiscal 20 uh, to give us cushion. Um, circuit breaker is aid from the state that the district receives to use toward special education costs. Um, uh, the, the district is allowed to make these claims for out-of-district tuition that exceed uh, four times the per-pupil aggregate costs. Uh, these funds have decreased since we have been providing more students in district uh, services uh, than out-of-district services. Therefore, this, this revenue has decreased. Um, and since it is difficult to predict special education outplacement, we are still reserving funds through our other revolving uh, source fund sources, um, which you'll see that there's a, a quite an uptick this year in where we're using some revolving funds. Uh, we are budgeting to increase uh, revolving spending uh, to cover that loss. And in addition, some of these funds were, are used to be the true up utility costs because in the past we've uh, under budgeted in utilities. Uh, so therefore our total, our increase for our, of all of our funds for our budget is 
a little bit over 5 million, which is the 6.5% increase that I discussed in the previous slide. You can go to the next slide, please, where we can talk about the, it's, it's another way of looking at how it's funded. And it basically shows that the town appropriation, which is about 91% of the budget uh, funds the education. And uh, the grants and revolvings have six to three and three percent, I mean, three and six percent respectively. But the, the following slide, which is gonna show similar information is showing, show, it breaks up what the actual town portion is, which is about 72%, which then is offset by 19% state aid. Uh, and then circuit breaker funds about 3% of, of, of what the, what's in, considered the revolving funds. If you can go to the next slide, it breaks down the, the how, we, how we intend to spend our, uh, our budget in fiscal 21 of this approximately $82.9 million. As you can see, special education is the largest followed by secondary education, which is grades six through 12 and elementary education, which is grades kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, and if you go to the next slide, we, we show that we, we, the town manager 12, where we benchmark. And this slide shows that once again, our fiscal 18, which is the most uh, up-to-date data that we have access to, um, based on end of year reports that are submitted by districts like ourselves and the other fellow districts in the town manager 12, we're in the middle of the pack. And this shows that we have performed well with the resources we have been provided compared to our fellow districts in the town manager 12. So if you go to the next slide, um, this is the, uh, the FY, the fiscal 21 uh, proposed budget changes summary. And so the total increase in revenue from the fiscal 20 budget is about $5 million. Um, however, before we look at what we can use it for ads, we have to take things off the top. So most of our, our, our budget is salaries, about 80% of our budget is salaries. Um, so $2.7 million is used to cover contractual salary increases, bargain salary increases, and other non-bargain uh, non, um, groups salary increases. We are also uh, allocating about 148,000 for instructional supply budgets. These are usually to address principal supply budgets, but as well this year, we are dedicate, we have dedicated budgets for, for the perf uh, performing visual arts and music programs, which will be allocated on a per pupil basis throughout the district. We are also dedicating, uh, uh, dedicated to increasing uh, curriculum materials and, and, and professional development uh, district-wide by 175,000. Of that the curriculum materials, about $50,000 is dedicated to uh, supplying library books district-wide. This is something that we had started in the FY21 budget as well as gonna continue, I mean 20 budget, as well as continuing to do so in the FY21 budget. Uh, we have also, like I said, discussed in, uh, about the utilities in, in the previous slide. We are dedicating uh, about $500,000 to increase in utilities, which would be on both uh, the town appropriation and on some of our revolving funds. In addition, uh, the upcoming high school project that I'm sure everybody knows about, um, there requires some moving with the phases. That's and, a question. Yep. Um, the utilities? Uh, Correct. That, uh, that's a pretty big number there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, increase. What? 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 Have some idea why that is? Um, that number. John. John, I think we need to wait for questions to the end. Okay. I'll take note to that question, John. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we'll get back to it first. All right. All right. Um. So in addition to the, 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 the new high school project that I'm sure everybody's aware of, um, the, it has a couple of phasing elements. And one of, the, one of the, the moves that are phasing parts of this is moving the preschool from the high school, uh, the current high school to the parmentor school. Um, and once that school becomes online, there's actually additional operational costs related to that. So that's tied up with the 180,000 where we anticipate additional uh, facility personnel, um, supplies, as well as utility costs for that building as well. Um, and then you'll see that out of all the reductions 
uh, in terms of this increase. We actually add back some funding. As I discussed that there were some decreases in um, circuit breaker for special education, but we also looked at how we're, we're spending out of district tuition and we're gonna use some of those funds to allocate for new proposed additions. So that leaves us with a total uh, um, of reductions to our net increase of about $3.4 million, which leaves us about $1.6 million for net increases. And the following slides just shows, you can go through the Metro and Leisure, just shows the increases at the different levels and the amounts that we about we budget or we estimate that it would cost to fund these additions. Most of these additions are part of the five-year plan. Um, some of them are from the, they were meant to be in the the fiscal 20 plan, but they wouldn't, we're not be able to afford it in the fiscal 20 plan. So we fund some of them in the fiscal 21 plan and in others that we couldn't fund, we would fund in out years. Um, and then we also went through a process where, which Dr. Bodhi discussed earlier, where we all kind of talk and meet and discuss, we reevaluate what the district needs and then additional ads that may have not been thought of when during the five year planning process were added. And so that's, all the proposed ads that you will see here, which add up to the $1.6 million for the net proposed ads. <laughs> and so then lastly is just the update in the five-year plan update. And, and, and really, I just explained it. it, it and I'll, I'll leave, Kathy can probably better articulate as well. Um, but we basically look at the request from uh, that was for fiscal 21 and the ones that were not uh, able to be funded in fiscal 20 and use that to kind of reprioritize the, you know, what the requests and the still the need, like the, the level of needs for those requests. And we then also look at what we currently need because there are other students to, as the population changes uh, that comes into the, to the district, we also have to look at those particular needs and, and try to make sure that we're addressing, you know, things like the achievement gap and, or students like that may need special, special care such as English learners um, and other, other things. So it's not that we feel that things are not going to be funded, it's just that we do not necessarily have all the funding required to meet all of the needs. And so we have to go through a process where we prioritize and decide what we can fund and what we cannot. Kathy, would you like to add anything further to that? I think you said it very, very well, actually. It is a process. When you look at the FY, uh, the five-year budget, what you will see is that there's more requests in the different years, particularly the earlier years of the plan that exceed actually the revenue that we would have. So it's a process of just reprioritizing and that's what we need to do. So, and some things can change as well. Um, there are new needs that present themselves and they have to be prioritized against other requests. And that's a process that we went through this year. Um, the other thing that you should know about the FY21 budget is that uh, Arlington needs to present a plan to the, to the Department of Education mandated by the legislature with these, uh, the new funding for Chapter 70 this year. And the, the, the plan on that is that you can have three quarters of the monies that you uh, have in your three-year plan, which is different than this five-year budget plan. We have another plan we have to present to the Department of Education was supposed to be due this week, but it's been extended. This three-year plan um, addresses how we're going to narrow the achievement gap. And so that is one of the functions of reprioritizing. But in that plan, they recognize that you have a continuum of effort in this regard. Um, and so you can use monies that you spent in FY20 and continue to spend them as part of the plan in FY21. Roughly 75% of the, the, the budget is uh, designed that way. 25% uh, can be new uh, initiatives that again, further those goals uh, for narrowing the achievement gap for a certain of our subgroups. And all, in fact, even before we knew the formula for how the three-year plan was going to be required to be developed, it was already in our budget. We, we really had to make no changes at all to 
comply with what um, is being asked of us. So that's pretty much the summary of where we are. Um, we were asked to keep this sort of short. Uh, and this is a good time for any questions that you might have. And maybe, um, uh, Michael, you could talk to John's question first. Yeah, that's the first one up. And then Alan Jones has a question after that, and then a race, and then Charlie Fawcett. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I think the, the question will just make sure I understand because he was, I think he was caught off guard by the increase of the utilities. Um, so the question is, what is it why is the utilities increasing as much as they are? Yes. Okay, so the, the utilities, we, we've typically, in order to fit everything in our budget, um, we have, we have on, 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 it, it looks as in history has shown that we've underfunded utilities about five, four to 500,000 a year. Um, working, we work closely with Ken Pruitt, who's the energy manager in the town, who provides his projections. And the prior year's budget, uh, we did, we were not able to include those projections in that. So we basically funded it, level funded it compared to the prior year. And we have to remember that we had opened the Gibbs School um, at, in that budget. And so it wasn't necessarily 100% accurately showing the, the, the normal expenditures plus adding on a new school. So uh, this budget is here to reflect the four, about 400, a little bit over $400,000 increase in electricity and about $100,000 in, in gas expenditures. Um, that is also, of course, includes, as we are adding new chillers to buildings through capital projects, there are other costs that are actually going to add on to our operations budget. So, uh, so as we add more features, um, we're doing energy efficiency projects to try to combat those particular um, negative trends, but unfortunately, uh, yes, the, the cost of utilities uh, have increased in such a way that we do need to true that up in our budget. I hope that answers your question. Okay, uh, thank you, Michael. Annie, who was the next person? Alan Jones. Okay, Alan. Yeah. Hi, Michael. This is a question about the revolving, the use of revolving funds in the total funding. And I'm looking at page 12 of the budget document. There are four revolving funds, uh, athletic fees, building rentals, uh, foreign exchange and tuition and revolving uh, that show large increases. And I was wondering, is that mainly use of call it retained earnings or increase in revenues or a mix of both? I just, you know, if you could comment on those, those four. Yeah so, increases. yeah, so some of them are tied to retained earnings. Um, and some of them are based on projected revenue increases, um, hopefully that we anticipate, but mo mainly we, they're from retained earnings. Okay, and so, so to speak about the, like specifically the, the athletic funds, we actually have uh, anticipated increases in expenditures in terms of uh, the, the coaches that um, have been providing services to our students throughout the district have not received increases in over, 10 years, and so they're now just getting an increase. So that's what you're seeing there. So most of those are from, that's gonna be covered by retained earnings. The, the building rentals, uh, what you're seeing is partially retained earnings, partially is gonna be an increase in uh, possibly in uh, fees to vendors that rent our spaces. But, um, but mainly um, we, re we reassess those fees every year. Um, and so um, that's to cover the utility costs that you, that you were, that we just discussed. And okay. then you'll see the, the other uh, expenditures uh, adjustments are tied to either uh, in, increase in um, professional development or the, uh, in the curriculum materials and then special education. Okay, well, what is uh, tuition in revolving? Tuition in revolving is, 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 uh, is revenue that we, we would receive for providing um, tuition for students that are from other districts. And we, we can use those for special education costs. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Annie, okay. who's next? So I thought it was a reach, but that was a private question to me about management. So it's Charlie. Charlie, you're up. Okay, Charlie, Charlie Foskett. Okay, can you hear me? 
Yes. Yes, this yep. is Charlie Foskett. So I have a, a couple of questions. First, I'd like to start with a comment. And, and uh, Kathy and, and Michael, I thought the, uh, the the budget book was extremely well done. And I thought that, and I think your presentation was well done. So it's really very interesting. Um, so one question, I, I, have, I have a couple of questions. One is um, a comment that you made, Michael, you said that you were using the savings in the um, out of district tuitions out of district costs for the special education to for new hires or you're removing them using it for new hires um i thought we were going to take those savings and put them into a sped reserve for um you know on when the sped costs go up is mm -hmm. that is that still a program or do we change something so can you want me to answer that your first question or is that all the questions yeah, that's the, no that's the first question Okay, so to, to answer that question, it's still a program that we do. So typically what happens is most of our, in the, the years, like in FY19 and, and currently this, this current year, uh, barring the fact that, you know, this, the current the COVID-19 situation, um, most of our surplus has been driven by uh, special education out of district tuition. And so what we do is if there is, uh, substantial uh, savings in out of district tuition, at the end of the year, we do vote to have the school committee vote to transfer that into the special education reserve fund. Um, but however, in, de in, it's in developing the budget, there are, since we're bringing more students in district, that means that more resources are needed inside the district. And so it's appropriate for us to reallocate some of those funds to actually use those for services to help special students with special needs. And that's that's what we're doing. So those those funds that you see that we reduced the special ed, out of district tuition by that th 300 or so thousand dollars is actually gonna be used just for special education addition uh, added positions thank that you, you would have saw on that list. Okay, thank you. Then I had a, a question both in the budget book and in the in your presentation. You mentioned the, um, or Kathy and Kathy also mentioned the this um, goal of closing the achievement gap, and I and I know that started a year or two ago. And I'm wondering um, how how we're measuring that we're closing the achievement gap, and are we in fact closing the achievement gap? Um, I'll answer that. Uh, Actually, this has been a goal for quite a long time, uh, maybe more specifically articulated in the last couple of years, but certainly uh, definitely on our minds for a long time. We have, one of the ways that we measure is, is MCAS scores. That's, that's the way that actually the state will evaluate this as well. They're not gonna look at our individual in-district assessments to, to measure that. On the other hand, uh, it's important for us to have assessments as we go along during the year to see how students progress. And overall, when you look at our results of the last few years with this concentrated effort, we are seeing, in, we are seeing improvements. There is um, some that are not as improved as others, but overall there has been. But the, the goal and the goal of the, the Commonwealth is that we, we the ultimate goal is that there isn't any kind of disparate performances. So we have um, in district created a, a data bank, uh, a file where we keep all of the, the different kinds of assessments that students, um, I may be answering more than you wanna know, Charlie, but we, we are keeping track of students on an ongoing basis all year. But the way that the state will measure whether we've improved is how we do on MCAS. And the second part of the question was, are we making, are we closing the gap? That was really. We're, we're making progress. Have we closed the gap? No, we haven't. Um, that's one of the reasons why over the many years we've been investing in interventions that support students who are not only have an education plan, but also students who do not. But are, but are struggling uh, with um, meeting a lot of the, the standards. So in fact, we probably should have put the graph in on this particular um, spreadsheet, but when you've looked over past years at how much we're spending on intervention work, 
math support, reading support, more coaching for teachers so that they can help um, students. It, it been, it's been significant and incremental each year. Um, and I think that what we're starting to see for clearly in numbers also in terms of performance, but also what we're, you're seeing in terms of how we're reshifting and reallocating special ed funds is that we are seeing that um, the work that we're doing is making a difference. Um, we're seeing more students that are, we're able to support in district, in district programs than having to have them uh, be out of district. The, the interesting thing is the number of our, our enrollment keeps going up. The number of students out of district has relatively remained somewhat flat. So there's, there's metrics like that we can look at too, which is, something that's important. I think most people would prefer that their children uh, go to school here in Arlington rather than uh, go to, out of district. On the other hand, if they need that kind of specialized program, which is more restrictive, then that's what we want them to have as well. Um, so the, the short answer is, Charlie, yes, we are making progress. Um, it's steady, um, and, uh, but, uh, but in the right direction. Thank you, Kathy. The, the last question is um, have to do with this year's financial situation. Are, are we, um, uh, are you ahead of the game or behind the game with the costs associated with the COVID-19 uh, uh, situation? Well, I think that we're going to be, I, in fact, I'm com very confident that we're going to be um, fine with respect to meeting our expenses in that regard. Um, with res going back to special ed, the Department of Education has told districts they want us to continue paying the tuitions and the, and the vendors who do transportation. So all of those costs are going to remain the same as we go through the year. As a district, we've made a commitment uh, that all of our, um, our hourly workers are going to be continued to be paid. But, you know, for example, there are, you know, a lot of programs that we have that you see reflected in our revolving accounts uh, are based on fees. And while we have, you know, certainly pleaded with people through different, uh, different emails that, you know, it would be great if they were able to continue paying, even though they may not be having the service, um, it's still, we're still going to continue paying the people whose salary comes out of a revolve, would comes out of these um, fees that come in. So uh, in, in our projections, as we've looked at them, we should be fine. That what we're in a fortunate position is that we were projecting uh, before all of this hit uh, a positive uh, surplus, which the plan had been to put into the special ed uh, stabilization fund that we have. And we'll just see how that, that goes over the next um, month or so. But, you know, for example, community ed, uh, you know, we have a lot in that, um, uh, that revolving account that comes from revenue from last year's summer fund. I don't know, and, and that pays us, it, it sort of a, pays the expenses up front. I don't know what's gonna happen this summer with respect to that. There's still a lot of unknowns that we're all dealing with um, right now, but at the moment, I would say that we should be fine. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'd just like to make a note that Carolyn White, uh, member of our finance committee has joined us. Hi, Carolyn. Uh, Annie, who's the next uh, question? Brian. Okay, Brian. Hi, Michael. Um, speaking of unknowns, um, I was looking at the, um, the sources of funding. I would imagine that the state is going to be in a, in a, a dire predicament uh, for this year and for the beginning of next year, at least. Um, is there any anticipation or any news as what the Chapter 70 funding is going to be, and if it's a, a, sh a significant shortfall, I mean, what would you be planning to do? Well, um, currently, I haven't heard any additional information in regards to funding from the state level at the moment for the outgoing year. Um, 
So I can only go based on the information that I have today. And in that information, it seems as though um, the, the state could possibly fund the current numbers that they're providing. Um, but I, I know that there's a lot of concern about, you know, anticip anticipated revenues um, and shortfalls, but um, we have no additional information. In terms of um, how we intend to handle that, uh, I've been, you know, we've worked closely with the town and understanding that our finances and how we can operate. And it seems as though we should be good for next year in terms of how we operate the budget. Um, and we'll continue to work with uh, Sandy and Adam and trying to figure out um, what it will look like as, as the time goes on. But uh, right now it looks like we're, we'll be fine for the next year's budget as well. Okay, thank you. Good question. Okay, any, anybody else? I don't have anybody else, so if anybody else wants to plunge in, you could either chat or raise your hand or something. Okay, I notice uh, Wen is on, Wen Cotton from the uh, chairman of the school committee. Wen, do you want to add anything? Wen? Okay, uh, at this point, oh. okay. Wait. Sorry, Annie had to be muted. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you, have to show, you have to show me how to do that for my meetings. We didn't know we could do that. <laughs> I'll show you. Uh, so yeah, just, just, just uh, I wanna thank um, uh, Dean and, and John and, and Jillian for um, uh, you know, meeting with us. Well, a couple of them met with us to go over the budget. Um, they also offered you know, to support any any ongoing any COVID nineteen related needs, uh, which as of now we we don't have. Um, uh, just in respect to Brian's comment, you know, everything everything is up in the air for next year. Um, we're operating on the assumption that hopefully uh, the state will deliver on you know what, what's in the governor's budget, but but who really knows? Uh, and the town faces a revenue crunch as well. Um, uh, so when all that happens, we'll probably have to have more meetings with you all to figure things out. Um, there may be capital needs going back in the fall. We may, you know, for example, if we need to bring in portable sinks so people can wash their hands more often, who, who knows what's going to happen in the fall. So a lot of uncertainty um, uh, and uh, this is our, our best budget that we can put together as of now, as of actually two weeks ago. Um, but things are changing quickly and, and we'll adjust as we need to. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Wen. Uh, okay, uh, at this point, uh, I'd like to ask the members of the Finance Committee, do I have a, a motion on the school committee budget and the town's appropriation to it? I'll, I'll make a motion. Second. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Uh, Bill. Uh, Bill Keller has seconded the motion. So Maiden seconded. Is there any further discussion? Okay, so this would be the total appropriation of the town for 76,030,531. Uh, I'm gonna have I'm gonna do a roll call vote now. Uh, Grant Gibbion. Aye. Shane Bundell. Aye. John Ellis. Aye. Carolyn White. Carolyn. I'll come back. Mary Margaret Franklemont. Yes. Uh, Vito, is that a yes vote? Yes. Arif Federia. Aye. Jonathan Wallach. Aye. Charlie Foskett. Aye. Brian Beck. Aye. Pete Howard. Pete Howard. I think some people are not uh, unmuting themselves. Pete, okay. you're muted. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Uh, Shailene Pokes. Aye. Carol Harmer. Aye. John Deist. Aye. Alan Jones. Aye. Annie LaCourt. Aye. 
Bill Keller. Hi. Marcel, uh, pass. George Koser. Hi. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. Dave McKenna. Yes. Okay. Uh, Carolyn White. Yes, aye. Okay. Okay, the vote to approve the school budget and its town appropriation passes, passes unanimously. Uh, Kathy, Michael, and all the members of the school committee who attended, I want to thank you very much for coming. Uh, and you're, you're more than welcome to stay uh, or, or leave at this point, uh, wh whatever your wishes is. But thank you very much. Thank you very thank much you. to all of you. We appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the water and sewer budget. Grant, you there? I am here. Okay. Uh, Annie, could you put up the, I think the next thing after the school budget was the water and sewer? Uh, so I think this is health care. Is water and sewer also in there or uh, well, uh, a big PDF? It should be and before can... it. Hang on a second. Uh, struggling with my mouse here a little bit. Just a minute. Okay. No. Nope. Yeah, there we go. No, you went past it, Annie. I went past it. There we go. That's it. That's a no. What? It's next slide. It's the oh, second next slide up from there. That's it. That's it there because uh, that's part of it. That's oh, all I've got uh, in this PDF. Uh, hang on. Annie, go to the big one. Yeah, yeah page, uh, PDF page 109. All right. Let me get there. <laughs> if you allow me to share a screen, I could pull it up on mine. I can do that. I will stop sharing. Oh, come on. Well, I'd actually have to pull up, bear with me on that. I'd have to pull up the budget. That's okay. Just scroll down to 109, you'll get it. Yeah, let me just get down to 109, Grant. That's going to be cool. Okay, that's fine. Jeez. Okay, just post it back. Oh, yep, there you go. Oh, there we go. Oh, great. Oh, oh, excellent. Hang on. There we go. Annie. Pretty good. All right. There we go. Annie, can okay. you widen? Can you can you um blow it up a little bit so we can see it better? This this is pretty good. No, we don't want to them the... to see it any better. <laughs> <laughs> is that okay? All right, is this, am I on the first page here? Yeah, I'm on the first, on the first page. Oh, that's the right page. All right. Grant, the floor is yours. Okay, well, um, the real magic comes in the the, uh, the attachment C, but we might as well go through the budgets. Um, so the sewer, it's a, Really, the water and sewer is the right way that we logically think of it, because the water comes in first and the sewer comes out second um, and gets collected. But it's really the other way around inside the computer, because S starts is sooner in the alphabet than water. So we start with the sewer collection system, and then we move on to the water. So that's why I sometimes jokingly call it sewer and water. Um, in essence, the water and sewer department has four divisions, sewer collection, storm sewer collection, then water distribution, and then water and sewer properties. The subtotals, um, because of the way that we have indirect charges got, uh, taken from the water and sewer, they don't always total up correctly. So that well, they total up correctly, but they have different subtotals than you might expect. Um, and that ties up on the expense summary at the very end of the budget. So um, if we start at the sewer collection system, we immediately come to the indirect charges. 
And uh, hey, Annie, how quickly can we uh, page through to like the uh, um, attachment C? That's the fourth one. Uh, oh, that's way down there. Oh, never mind, Annie. I'm so sorry. All right, let's go. Um, too tough to do. There we go. This is attachment C, but we'd have to swap back and forth. Yeah, let's. Uh, sorry about that. Let's just stay with the sewer collection. This is going to be. Um, <laughs> This can be more tedious than it usually is. <laughs> uh, all right. You're saying something. There we go. Okay. So if we take a look at the um, if we take a look at the uh, first lines indirect charges, um, this is a collection, and best explained on. Um, This is essentially salary and wages of all of the um, uh, DPW divisions that are involved in, in, in the sewer and water collection and distribution. Um, their salaries are totaled up and divided. The portion of their salaries um, is divided in half and half of it goes into the sewer collection staff indirect charges, and the other half goes in the water distribution staff indirect charges. Um, so those numbers are pretty much fixed by the uh, uh, wages and salaries of the supporting divisions, which is engineering, DPW admin, highway, and the motor equipment repair. Uh, and the total of those is really a uh, uh, 1,143,987, and half of those is the 571,994 uh, that we see there. Uh, so the increase in that is really attributed to the salary and wages of all those other divisions and not necessarily the water and sewer budget itself. There are many other variances like that um, due to the indirect charges. Um, so the next section are indirect charges. And again, this is um, only the sewer portion of it. You'll see a matching portion of this uh, in the water distribution. Uh, I think this one's under water sewer property section. Uh, now the workman's comp cost and the unemployment compensation, those are fixed amounts. They're the same way every year. Um, now that Sandy's here, he can actually hear my pitch to say that, oh, I, we talk about this every year, but by the time we get to it, um, we, we don't really think that moving them around is really worth it. Um, uh, my best guess on these is that when the system was set up, these had to have amounts in them because they are required for payroll. So they're plugged amounts of uh, 6,000 and 1,500 in this one. And we'll see in the water distribution section that it's uh, a 1,500 each. They're the same every year. Uh, they don't change. Uh, now, the next three items are all offset amounts, and uh, I have this detailed on attachment C, um, but these are where they all match up to the offsets in the budget. The retirement, for instance, the retirement costs of 672070 that comes from the budget book, page 150. The health benefits are the same way. That comes from budget, uh, budget book uh, 160 the health insurance budget. We'll see that next. Um, and then the indirect costs. And the indirect costs are similarly allocated the way that the indirect char uh, salary costs are, except these are charges that are offset against the selectmen, town manager, other town departments that provide support for water and sewer. Um, those are also listed on attachment C. They're also uh, listed in attachment B, um, the supporting offsets. And these amounts uh, or the percentage of these offsets um, were essentially assigned by a consulting company um, at some point in time. Um, so they're all the same and they're all dependent on the, um, uh, uh, and they're all matched up to the other uh, uh, amounts in the other budgets. 
So those things are beyond the DPW's control, so to speak. But the next section isn't. So the next section is actually sewer collection expenses directly related to the expenses of collecting sewers. Um, and if we looked at these, this is the flat, this whole budget is pretty flat. Um, and the only thing that changes are things that are really beyond the budget's control, um, beyond the department's control. For instance, the indirect costs and things like the MWR assessment. Everything else is <laughs> pretty flat. Um, so with that, I'm gonna kind of move through it because other than questions about the offsets and how we actually got there, um, it's pretty flat budget and I'm gonna ask for, uh, for your vote. So we can, um, Oh, the next, so the next section is the MWRE assessment, and this is for the sewer portion. And if you notice, this increases by the same amount every year, uh, pretty much. Again, beyond the water sewer department's control. Um, Annie, can we uh, slip to the next slide, please? Oh yeah, is that the next slide? Okay, what is what a distribution system? Um, so these are the actual salaries. Um, and wages of the people who are assigned to the um, strictly the uh, uh, water and sewer. Uh, and again, this is no great surprises in the variance and is very similar to last year with the exception of, uh, of the uh, personnel, but um, those are basically because of the longevity. Um, the next section, is the indirect charges section, and this is that matching section that we saw in the previous, um, um, Annie, I think we, we missed sewer and storm sewer collection. I think there's a slide pre previous to this. There we go. That's it. Now, isn't that something I don't have this in front of me and yet I know, uh, isn't that sad when I <laughs> know this budget pretty well. So, um, but there we go. So this is again, these are items that are related to debt service and beyond really beyond water and sewer departments control. And if you see that the increases um, uh, are pretty much as similar as they are every year. Uh, the exception being the sewer rehab, which is within the um, water and sewer departments control because that's the amount that they're uh, investing in um, rehabbing the sewers. And then here's that other division, which is a separate division called a uh, storm sewer collection system. Um, and this just has expenses allocated to it. This is the only part of this budget. And you can see it's contracted services and materials and, and rehab. And they're all pretty much the same as last year. So that concludes the sewer portion um, Alan, when did you want to take a vote on this? Did you want to wait for the whole thing? Well, let me uh, let me stop here. Are there any questions on the uh, sewer section of the charts that uh, Grant went through? Annie, who's uh, oh Brian. Brian, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, okay. Grant, how much are the salaries in the sewer division? Um, they're the, they're the, they're the same as the, um, the water division. It's the same. They're the same for the actual salaries are the same. It's the, uh, indirect ones that are split into the two different, um, into water and sewer. Well, I'm looking at the retirement costs and I'm probably asked this last year as well, but I've forgotten the retirement costs are 600,000 and I'm looking for the salary that that's applicable to. Oh, it's a, um. That's not a water and sewer retirement salaries. That's Arlington, town of Arlington retirement. In the retirement budget, when we discuss the retirement budget, that's the amount that's of the offset. The 506 is half of the amount of the total offset. But it's isn't it, the, is, is that, is, is, is that for then the unfunded portion of the retirement as well? Oh, uh, uh, again, we're talking about the indirect charges, right? 
Yeah, I'm talking about on page 110, line 5707. Um, so, Annie, if you could just, ooh, if we can make it to attachment C, because that's where this is easily explained for the rest of the, okay, one more, one, that's it right there. Okay, so oh, this is actually water and sewer combined. This is the water and sewer budgets combined. The, um, and so if you look at the retirement costs on the section of salary and wages, where it says 5707 retirement costs. Yeah. That amount is the offset for the budget book, page 150, the retirement budget. That whole amount, 1344, 140. Okay. The represents the offset. Half of that is the 565, 330, I mean, sorry, the, that's it. That's the whole thing that you're saying. What I'm at, yeah. what I'm at, what I'm asking is we have, and you, there's going to be another line item in the water distribution um, as well. Correct. There is. Right. So the total, the total is well over a million dollars for retirement costs. And what my, what I was asking is what's the total of the salaries. If you're, if you want to do it together for water distribution and sewer, that's fine. But I'm just trying to figure out the percentage of the retirement costs against the salaries. You need to look at the retirement budget. But the retirement budget doesn't have the salaries for the water and sewer. That's right. That's because this amount doesn't represent that. It, this amount represents uh, its portion, a portion of the retirement costs that water and sewer covers. But it's retirement costs for the retirement budget. And it's the offset amount that's listed at the bottom of the budget. This is how this, this, is this sheet is how I make sure everything tick and ties. I, I think I'm I think I, I I'm a dog chasing my tail here. I Could be, but, or, I or maybe you're barking up the wrong tree. I think I'm barking up the right tree, actually. No, um, I think you are, I think you want to bark up the retirement tree. Sure. No, no, no. I understand the retirement side of it. I'm asking what are the, the retirement is to, is basically two factors. Okay. There's the unfunded portion of the, uh, uh, from prior years and there's the current year as well. My question to you was what is the gross salary because it's in different spots in here. And the, what I'm looking at is, is it's approximately $2.5 million applicable to the water and sewer budget. I, 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 is that a correct statement? 2.5? That's roughly from what I've seen here, in, from the indirect costs, and then I take the salary and wages from the water. I, I think I'm missing something in the salary line, and that's what my question is. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Charlie. Uh, so, um, Brian, the, the uh, retirement costs include um, the cost for the, the direct cost and the uh, the normal costs and the unfunded liability costs for the existing um, retirees, I'm sorry, the existing workers, but it also includes an allocation for costs of retirees that, that were working in the water and sewer department. So it's not directly tied, you can't directly tie it to the current year's salaries of active workers. In other words, if there's- I understand what you're saying. I, I, I understand that. Uh, my only question was, and I was just curious, what is the total salaries for the water and sewer? And I, I and I'm just trying to find out if it's twenty, if it's two million five. That's that's basically. Oh, what the I total salary. Well, that the to um, total salaries for water and sewer. That's under the water. That's. That's salary and wages. That's a million ninety. Oh, I'm. You're looking way at the end of the total expenses. No. Uh, I think you are. So if you take. I the, added. I added four, three or four things together. I, my question is straightforward, and you might know it better, Grant. Roughly, what is the, in your estimation, what is the salaries that are been allocated and directly included in water and sewer? 
So are well, you asking the, for the salary page then? The no, salary saying, page. The salary page. The, no, but there's things out. There's salaries allocated here. It's more, it's more than just a salary page. The allocated salary. They're, they're, they're portions of the other people's salaries. There, there are certain portions. There's certain portion of the of the of, of the engineering DPW highway motor equipment repair. Uh, repair. And are those salaries in this budget? No, they're in the DPW budget. That's why okay. we have the indirect. That's why we have these basically intercompany charges, except well, they're interdepartmental. Is it that like what this uh, that staff indirect charges is? Indirect. Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I included that five hundred thousand. It's it's okay. We we can. I'll meet you over the summer in my backyard. We'll discuss it. Yes, at cocktail hour. Yes. Okay. I mean, take a look. You're, if you're looking at the page that says total water distribution system, personnel service summary, I think that's the two and a half million you're looking at. Uh, actually, it wasn't. I was just I was just yeah. trying to I, I went through the line items and just added them up and I got there. It was it was an approximation. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm, I'm happy because, like I said, I believe I, we went over this last year as well. Yeah. Well, you, you, you've got the personnel summary service summary of about two and a half million. Uh, but that's just for water. Then you have salaries for uh, your sewer, and then you have all the indirect DPW charges. So I think it would be considerably, uh, you know, more than the two and a half million. Well, that's what I it's thought. Not, that's what I was asking. All the cost for the uh, retired people. Okay, Grant, do you want to? Are there any other questions right yeah, now? I have a question. If we're, um, isn't this a uh, an enterprise fund? Yes. So shouldn't we be voting also on the revenues? Yes. Uh, don't we do that at the very well? That's that's is it. That's the what the second to last page. But yeah, we'd vote on that too, right? Yes. Want, that, that was my question to Alan. Do we do it all together? Uh, and I think he just wanted questions. However, Alan wants want to, to do, do it. Yeah. At this point. Okay. So uh, why don't you? Um, I think you finished the sewer. You're going on to the water distribution system. Yep. Okay. Go. All right. So this is. Um, <laughs> so these salary and wages are the actual people who work um, for the water and sewer division are directly charged. And uh, as Alan pointed out, the total of these um, um, personal expenses plus the total indirect charges are what we see as the personal service summary at the very end. Um, and so again, though, this is, um, uh, they did fill uh, a vacant position, um, but also I think the reason why the high increase in the salary, we had just mentioned this before, um, before we had to go back to the sewer collection, um, is that uh, there's a longevity factor involved that they've been um, um, quite high, I think. Um, the next section is the indirect charges, um, which is, uh, as we talked about, it's also uh, schemed out on the um, attachments about how they're allocated. Um, and then there's the water distribution section of it. And this is the actual, uh, uh, the, um, actual expenses uh, that are not personnel related and not offsets. And these are stayed exactly the same as they did last year. And uh, the next section should be uh, the capital uh, section. And here we go, the MWRA assessment. And again, this increased uh, similar as it has in the years past and is beyond the control pretty much of the water and sewer. Um, so that set, sets up the total water distribution system. And here's the final division, which is the water sewer properties. And this is a division that's set up to contain the indirect expenses of the salaries and wages. This is the um, half of the amount that we discussed before. And the remainder of the budget is either a capital or debt. So here's the next section is the 100,000 that we're gonna do to rehab the water mains. And the next is the, how we're going to pay for uh, the MWRA loans for the water mains. Uh, we also have um, some line item expenses that have stayed the same uh, every year. 
you know, pretty much they haven't varied too much. He's been pretty close and accurate on those. Um, next line is the uh, principal and interest on the water debt service. Um, believe we're trying to pay this off faster. Sandy could speak this maybe a little better, but we'll pay this off a little faster so that we can focus on the um, uh, next big expenditure coming down the line. Um, on to the next uh, slide, please. Okay. Um, here's more capital. So there's a hydrant and valve replacement program and they allocate the same amount to it every year. Um, in the past, they haven't quite accommodated it, but um, it, they, he likes to have it there. Um, next sections are, um, we we'll want to point out they're actually spending less on the capital equipment this year than they have in the previous, than they budgeted last year. Okay, and if we go to the next slide, I believe this is the summary page. Okay. Um, so here we have the, this is the reason why the uh, subtotals are totaled the way that they are, they are is because they, uh, all the salary and personnel services total into this line, uh, the very first line of the two million, two and a half million. All those individual expenses like the contracted services and the electricity uh, for both water and sewer, this is where we have to bring it back together again. Um, and actually, just one second, uh, if I may, the, this has always been a pet peeve, um, and this is part of the reporting system, but if you look at that very last line item right above the summary where it says total water distribution system, it should not say that. It should say total water distribution, sewer, and properties, because that's what the, that amount represents. It's actually not just water distribution, it's also water sewer, it's also the water and sewer properties combined. Um, but with that, that's just a reporting a typo that they could just change the, the, uh, the description of the total line and that would work fine. But it just it makes it a little bit difficult, if, to, more confusing if you're trying to total it out because it doesn't seem to match up. It's because it's not just not named accurately. Um, so we talked about the personnel service summary. We talked about the expense summary. And the next is basically a total of the MWA or assessment for both water and sewer departments. Uh, then we total up the indirect charges. And this should match uh, up to what we have in, the, um, in these other schedules. Um, the capital debt and the health insurance is the other match and the retirement is that matches up with what we saw in the, uh, in the line items. Uh, and those plug items for the workman's comp and unemployment, those also match up there too. So this is a way as well as attachment C that I just make sure that all the offsets do indeed match up correctly um, and that everything ties out. So here we have total expenses of 22,957,178. And uh, when we go to the next pages, we'll see that we have the same amount for the revenues. Too far. And uh, one of the reasons we have the same amount is because we transferred in um, a little bit over three and a half million from the general fund. And here are the rest of the uh, revenue items that uh, Charlie had uh, mentioned that we do in fact need to vote on. Um, um, so Al Alan Jones has a question. Are we, are we good Alan? Going for that or do you need to keep going? Okay, well, uh, first uh, an observation, everybody should pay attention to the fact that the transfer from general fund, which is the debt shift has gone down and you know, related to that is the user charges have gone up. So this is the beginning of the phase out of the debt shift that pays for capital costs. Um, the, the question I had was sort of related, and, and it, it's a question on my mind, how much are the MWRA assessments based on the actual water usage? And I'm wondering, as, as we eliminate the debt shift, which is sort of a fixed thing, to more to user fees, would, would people actually save money by using less water now? Uh, you know, it, it's sort of a, a relation between what used to be a fixed charge, the debt shift, and I assume the MWRA charges are based on water usage somehow, Yeah, as well as capital. 
and as we're moving towards user charges, I'm just trying to figure out how that how that will affect future budgets, and you know what happens if we start saving water or using more water. You know, I thought of the sort of the same thing in the relationship. It's an interesting relationship. The relationship we have between the the water sewer and and the end users is similar that the relationship has between the MWRA and its communities, in that. There's a fixed amount, they have a fixed amount of expenses that they have to cover and everyone has to pay a share. So they take the total and divide it by your expected usage and that's what you get billed for. And that's also how we assign rates for the uh, end users uh, on, the town, on the town situation. So it's sort of a closed game. I not really thinking about, I, I, well, it's, I, I can't really picture offhand about the effect the debt shift would have on it, but that I still think the charges based on water usage are fixed. I mean, the, the debt shift has been a big chunk of the revenues. And as it, as it goes to zero, all of that shifts over to user charges that are based on water usage. So I'm, you know, I don't know how, how that impacts the budget or, or the user, you know, or the end user's costs. Yeah. Well, and there is cost. I'll, I'll leave that as a question. It's always gone up every year about, about the same, their assessment keeps going about pretty much the same amount. Yeah. Sure. Honestly, that was a question, but I did want to emphasize this this shows the beginning of the elimination of the debt shift. That's, that's yes, and I thank you for pointing that out because that was a better explanation than I was going to give it. <laughs> okay, um, Annie, so the next person. Charlie Popkin has a question. Okay, Charlie. Uh, it's actually a, a comment on. Um, on the question that Alan asked. Uh, so I looked into this a couple of years ago and uh, with respect to saving uh, water. And um, first of all, um, when I looked into it, a substantial portion of the water bill that the town got from the MW, the water sewer bill that the town got from the MWRA was uh, pretty much a fixed cost because um, it's associated with the with the uh, debt service on the big dig, which we've probably all forgotten about. But you know that was billions of dollars, um, and and we were in a strange situation where um, if we use less water, then um, they don't get the revenues that they would get, you know, per gallon or whatever it is they charge us. So then the fixed cost allocation for all the towns goes up. So there's a, a so it's almost, a, it's almost a situation where there's no incentive to use less water. Uh, and um, that's right. I can't, uh, I can't comment on, you know, I'm not counting, commenting on the social aspect of that. I'm just saying that the, the finances don't provide us an incentive to use less water. Right. I'm just saying that the from from the revenue point of view, the the debt shift has been a fixed amount that's sort of based on the value of your house, whereas the user charges are based on the amount of water you use. And uh, I don't know how, how the MWRA assessment is related to you know how much of that's fixed cost and how much of that's variable cost. So, so it's really an open ended question how how that will impact things as our fixed charge as the debt shift goes away. Uh, don't forget, though, that the less water we use, the more we'll get charged for it. Right. Per gallon. Right. So it's, that's what I mean about it's fixed. So we use yeah. less, so we got to pay the same amount, so we pay yeah. more for it. Well, I, I guess, Charlie, maybe it'd be interesting, you know, you know, maybe we can talk about it later, to go through your same analysis, but assume no debt shift. Well, I don't think it, changes it, it won't have any aggregate, according to what the selectmen have promised and what we heard from the town manager, mm -hmm. it won't have any um, impact on the total cost to the, to the taxpayers as a whole. But it's right. probably going to have a cost different, you know, from you and me. In other words, if I don't water my lawn all summer, I'm going to have a different, it'll have a different impact on me than it will if you're watering every day. Right. That's what I'm curious about. Yeah. I okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, then uh, Grant, do I have a motion from you on the accepting the water and sewer budget of 22,957, 178 expenses and the same amount for revenues? Yes, I'd like to make a motion for that very same amount, Alan. 
Okay, do I have a second? Second. 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 Okay, is there any further discussion? Okay, then roll call. Okay, Grant Gibeon. Aye. Shane Bundell. Aye. John Ellis. Aye. Carolyn White. Aye. Mary Martin. Aye. Yep. Arif Padera. Aye. Jonathan Wallet. Aye. Charlie Foskett. Aye. Brian Beck. Aye. Peter Howard. Peter Howard. He's muted. Yeah. Peter, you're muted. Yes. Muted or asleep? I meant, you know, my presentations. <laughs> I, know, I was muted. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, Peter. Yes. Okay. Uh, Shailene Pokress. Aye. Okay. Daryl Harmer. Aye. John Dice. Aye. Alan Jones. Yes. Alan. Aye. Aye. Annie LaCourt? Aye. Bill Keller? Aye. Okay, George Koser? Aye. Christine Deschler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. Dave McKenna? Aye. Okay. Uh, thank you, Grant, for your presentation. It's appreciated. So could you go to uh, uh, health insurance? Or uh, town insurance, Annie. That's yes. your there. You go. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Bill Keller here, and um, I see that we have the uh, the correct budget. It's uh, it's uh, the updated budget based on the new uh, insurance rates. So we're looking at uh, a budget online uh, fifty seven oh four. Of uh, sixteen million seven sixty two four ninety seven, which is a five point seven percent increase. So what I thought I would do is, uh, because this is the most important uh, line item um, on the page, is to discuss how we get to the five point uh, five point seven percent, and then if there are any questions on any of the other items, Medicare penalty, the group life, me Medicare payroll, flexible benefit. Uh, we could take that up and then from there proceed down to the offsets and then I'll be asking for a motion to accept. Okay, okay. so uh, so the 5.7% um, basically is uh, pretty easy to get to, but it is, it is a big number. It's about a million dollars versus the year before, $900,000 versus the year before. So I would say that uh, one factor, and I'll just kind of ramble off maybe three or four quick bullets. First one is the total enrollments increased last year from 1,019 to 1,065. So that was a 4.5% increase in enrollments. So you gotta understand that within the enrollments that these are folks that are gonna be getting uh, you know, uh, a health insurance plan of one kind or another. And that uh, one fact that we know is that the town pays 80%, roughly 80% of the premium of these plans and the, and the employee pays 20. Now, there's some different, there are some exceptions to that I won't go into uh, necessarily, but the average is about 80, 20. So it's a very, very good program, a very nice benefit for the employees of uh, the town of Arlington. Uh, the next thing I would say that's related to that and by the way, if you want to see the enrollments themselves, uh, it's on page four of the 15 page handout that I attached, but I won't necessarily have to go there unless anybody has a, a question about that. So just stay on, stay on the budget. Uh, the next is uh, the average increase in the GIC or the Group Insurance Commission rate was uh, roughly about 4.8%. And every year, you know, these the each each carrier has um, a different um, plan each year, and their premiums change each year. Generally, they go up. And in fact, they all go up anywhere from 0.3 percent to seven or eight percent. 
And what we find is there's generally a cluster of uh, town employees around two particular uh, carriers. And those are plans offered by Tufts or plans offered by Harvard Pilgrim. So they kind of skew the, um, they skew the, uh, the participation by the fact that if let's say 60% want Harvard Pilgrim and Tufts and their premiums are higher, it's gonna be a higher cost to the town. Um, so the other two points I just wanna point out that, that affect the increase are when employees uh, are aged out. And what that means is that when an employee is uh, a younger employee is living at home and is presumably in their parent or parents uh, health care insurance plan, at some point they age out. Now they're an employee of the town. So now the town picks them up on one of the uh, health insurance plans. This past year, there were 12 such employees that aged out. So another factor that adds to that 5.7% increase. Two more quick bullets. Um, in the town of Arlington, another very, very nice benefit that uh, we offer to town employees when they retire is that at age 65, when they go on Medicare, when they select a Medicare Part B Advantage plan, the premium is split between the retiree, the town retiree and the town. So 50-50. And uh, that's important because that's paid for life. And there were a number of retirees, every year there's retirees, but there were, there were, I don't know the number exactly, but there are people that retired in the last year. And they just go up into a different category and they're paid, uh, they receive this benefit for life. The last point is just one uh, that I think we all can understand is that Arlington's become a very, very popular, well-liked place to want to live. Uh, more families are moving in. They move in with kids. The kids go to school. Our schools need teachers. And so we hire more teachers. All the teachers in the town of Arlington are covered under the uh, group health care plan as well. So um, that's just an illustration to see if maybe we can work understand, uh, illustrate a little bit better how we get to that 5.7%. And um, with that, I'll just, you know, I'll go down to the bottom line there. And if uh, anybody, does anybody have a question on any of the other line items I'm happy to address or talk about, but there's no, uh, no surprises uh, to our finance subcommittee in terms of those items. Okay, so going on down after you apply the offsets and uh, the offsets, I believe are on page two. Uh, we can walk through that if you like, but again, they all make sense. Um, the offset of $708,089 brings the group health insurance uh, budget for 2021 to $18,376,970. So, I would like to ask for a motion to accept this budget as printed. So moved. This is Charlie. And Carolyn seconded. Any discussion? Where'd Alan go? <laughs> okay, I think I heard uh, 23 eyes. Is that right? <laughs> Virtual. I heard. I heard. I heard twenty-three virtual eyes, but now we have to hear I it. Have, I, don't think I think you have to go through all the budgets, um, and the insurance budget gets voted all all at once. Um, well, this is the group health. After this, what, what do you mean? After this, we're going to go to the liability. But this is the group health life life insurance, and this is the total budget of eighteen three seventy six nine seventy. Did, did you mean, Charlie, did you want to go through the different lines that comprise this? And I'll be happy to go no, through. I, no, we have we have several different insurance budgets, right? Don't we just um, vote them? No, but there's only one budget that we're going to be voting on. Go ahead. 
there's only one budget that we're voting on. There's about 15 pages of documents that to, to support or back up how we got to the uh, budget page. And that's why I asked people if they have any questions, I'll be happy to explain. But I did, I did send out by email back on March 17th, uh, 15 page documents, 15 pages of documents that, um, that support the uh, request for, um, for this, for this particular budget, including the offsets and uh, other aspects uh, that I mentioned, um, the increase in enrollment, the increase in fees, and so forth. So uh, I, I, I guess I'm not really understanding what the problem is um, at this point. Uh, if, if we're at a point we can put this to a vote, I'm happy to put it to a vote. If there are any questions or discussion, I'm happy to entertain them. So once again, I'll ask, um, do we have okay, a motion? Bill, yes. uh, are there any questions? I'm sorry, I had my mute on. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, are there any questions on the group health insurance budget? Okay, then the motion has been made and seconded to approve for 18-376-970. I will do the roll call now. Grant Gibbon. Aye. Shane Bundell. Aye. John Ellis. Aye. Carolyn White. Aye. Shoot. Aye. Mary Margaret. Frank yes. Yeah. Yeah. Arif Padaria. Aye. Jonathan Weil Wallach. Aye. Sally Foskett. Aye. Uh, Brian Beck. Aye. Peter Howard. Yes. Uh, Shailene Pokress. Aye. Daryl Harmer. Aye. John Deist. Aye. Alan Jones. Aye. Annie LaCourt. Aye. Brian Keller, or Bill Keller. Aye. Okay, uh, George Koser. Aye. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. And Dave McKenna. Yes. Okay, now I just realized my problem of doing this. Uh, Bill, could you take the uh, liability insurance and, and go through that, please? I can. Um, so moving on, the uh, next is the liability insurance. And uh, after offsets, the 2021 budget request is for 481,818, which is a 0% increase from last year. So when we, uh, when we reviewed this budget, we saw that there are again, no big, no big surprises. Um, I can explain each one of these line items if you like, but if there aren't any questions, I recommend that we accept this budget as printed for 481,000, uh, 481, excuse me, $818. Is there a second, second to that motion? Second. Okay, so it's uh, issue's been uh, made and second. Are there any questions or discussion? Okay, um, I should have done this vote as one. I apologize for that, but it's a little too late to go back now. So I'm doing a roll call vote on the liability insurance. Uh, Grant Gibbion. Aye. Shane Bundell. Aye. John Ellis. John. Aye. Carolyn Aye. White. Aye. Very much. Frank Lamont. Yes. Arif Federia. Aye. Jonathan Wallach. Aye. Charlie Foskett. Yes. Brian Beck. Yes. Peter Howard. Yes. Shailene Pokress. Aye. Daryl Harmer. Aye. John Deist. Aye. Alan Jones. Aye. Annie LaCourt. Aye. Bill Keller. Aye. Uh, George Koser. Aye. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. Dave McKenna. Yes. Okay, Bill, thank you very much for that. Appreciate your work. And the next budget is the cable access. And uh, Sandy? Yes. Sandy, are you there? I am here. Okay, Sandy, could you uh, t tell us something about the uh, cable access budget? These are about the 
the same categories that we had last time. Any highlights or lowlights or anything? Um, no, I I got most of these from AC, most of these numbers from ACMI, um, and uh, so we know how much we're expected to get from the cable providers. That's a seven hundred ninety-eight thousand, um, and plus they put in some uh, money for uh, for capital. Uh, and then there's a small amount of estimated revenue from other things. Uh, most of what uh, ACMI spends its money on is um, salaries, the 608. Um, they have a capital plan that lays out $135,000 for, um, for their capital needs. And so, and so then they frankly sort of back into the expenses number uh, of 185. Um, beyond that, um, I really don't have a lot more to say about it, to be frank. Okay. Uh, do I have any questions? Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved. Second? Second. Brian. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for favorable action on the, uh, the budget. Remember, this is money that basically used to come in, go directly to the cable access. Uh, until the Department of Revenue said that, no, you've got to go through the town meeting process. Uh, so these are basically the same, not exact numbers, but categories that we had before. So this money uh, comes in and then uh, comes in from the cable providers uh, and then goes directly out to the uh, public access. Uh, so the motion's been made and seconded. Are there any questions? Discussion? Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Grant Gibbion. Says I. Shane Blundell. Aye. John Ellis. Aye. Carolyn White. Aye. Mary Margaret Franklemont. Yes. Arif Federia. Aye. Jonathan Wallach. Yes. Charlie Foskett. Aye. Brian Beck. Aye. Peter Howard. Yes. Shailene Pokress. Aye. Daryl Harmer. Aye. John Dice. Aye. Alan Jones. Aye. Annie LaCourte. Aye. Bill Keller. Yes. George Koser. Aye. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. Dave McKenna. Yes. Okay. Now that finishes that. And now we go to the review of changes to the budget from the uh, from the town manager. Annie, if you could slide that up. All right. yeah. Can I say something? Uh, sure, Peter. Sure. Um, Annie, can you find the uh, little thing that that I got uh, sent out this afternoon from from Liz through Liz? The one page thing was that. Is that this? Yes. Okay. Um, so, so I'd like to um, consider, ask for reconsideration of this of the manager's budget. And the okay. uh, if you want explanations of Sandy's right there to provide them. All right. Okay, I'll, I, I'll take, we'll do a, uh, when we do the vote, we'll consider that both a reconsideration of the old and the acceptance of the new all, all at once. Uh, Excuse me. So Peter, do you want uh, the deputy town manager to chip in here? Sure. Okay. Sandy, are you here? I'm still here. Okay. Uh, do you want to go through these? Now, I know Adam put together a uh, memo sort of explaining these changes, but do you want to uh, perhaps summarize that a little bit and then uh, w exactly what's happening? Sure. Um, so we're at the final phases of the budget, and what we're trying to do is align everything um, to, to one, uh, to get to 
the town budget to be at a 3.25% increase over last year's budget. Um, and so that takes place in several different departments. Uh, the first two you see on the screen now are the town manager's department and the legal department. Uh, the change in the town manager's department comes um, largely because Adam, with the support of the select board, has wanted to reconfigure how um, organizes the, the town departments that report. A couple of years ago, as you know, we uh, created a finance department, uh, including the treasurer, collector, controller, and assessor. Those departments, plus purchasing information technology and acting as a liaison to the school department, would fall under my jurisdiction. What's new under this budget and, and where most of the changes come from is um, promoting Jim Feeney to be a second deputy town manager. He's currently um, the assistant town manager, but he would become a deputy town manager and oversee um, and have report to him public works, facilities, recreation and rink, inspectional services, and he would act as a liaison to the town clerk. Adam would retain oversight of the other departments. Um, and I think the whole reason for him doing this is to reduce the number of direct reports to him um, and to allow uh, him to work on things other than just overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of departments. So um, there is a sub substantial increase in the pay to Jim Feeney from what he had been as an assistant but he will be as a deputy. There's also a $2,500 increase over and above what my, in, my increase would have been. Um, and uh, so that totals up the total change in uh, um, the town manager's budget. So uh, because of some of those changes, there's also a slight change to the longevity numbers uh, just to have them um, line up. So before I go to legal, Al, I don't know if you'd like me to take questions or just keep going. Now, why don't we take questions on that since this is the, uh, the major one. Are there any questions on the change in the town manager's budget? I'm just going to raise a concern. Um, the, the new assistant has been here a year. Oh. The, the person who's getting the increase in their salary? Yes, uh, Carolyn? Uh, yes. He, he's been in the town manager's office a, a little more than a, a more long employee of, um, of the town. Um, and he's played the role of being an interim. He, he helped run the recreation department when we had, um, after Joe Connolly left, Yes, but but his role, his role, his current role, which we're about to change, he's had that for a, a little over a year, is what you're saying? Yes, uh, oh. a little more than that, I think. Okay, so we did this uh, less than two years after the community development or town development person um, started as well. We had a significant increase in her salary, and I. Again, I'm very concerned about the fact that I keep watching the top people, the professional class in our town get these really significant increases in their salaries. And we don't see that at the bottom end. Um, and I'm just gonna throw that out there. I want that put on the record. Um, and I'm not sure I'm gonna approve this. So that's all I have to say. Thank Alan, you. Peter has also raised his hand. Um, Are there any other comments or questions? Yes. Peter. Uh, Peter Howard. Annie, could you put that my uh, view graph back up there? Uh, here. Um, I want to show. I just <clears throat> there were a change in salaries. For, there's a change in longevity. For a new a new sum of those two things, 
which is a $27,525 increase. So the bottom line that we vote on was uh, 756.021. And with that increase, it becomes 783.546. I wanted to simplify the, uh, the numbers so we know what the revision is that we're talking about. As, as I also like to comment on that um, uh, organization chart that, that Adam provided that reduces his span of control from, from uh, 12 or something to eight. Um, I don't know how many of you have been exposed to span of control, but, it, or, but um, it's a favorite topic in, in uh, management theory. And um, for this kind of a situation, uh, eight is a much more recent, is considered by the experts uh, much more reasonable than, than uh, 12. Okay, are there any other questions or comments? Um, so I, I just have one comment. Okay. I just have one comment, and that is also on this chart of accounts. Um, and I'm just going to mention to you, Sandy, that information technology would normally be considered an operations, not a finance function. And there's a lot of reasons that it being in the finance department is the wrong place. So personal opinion, also life experience, just you should think about it. Okay, I'm glad to hear uh, offline more of your thoughts on that. Okay, um, before we move on to the legal budget, um, I want to just make one comment. Remember in all this, you know, you're looking at the position that is in there um, as opposed to the, uh, the position itself and what it's worth as opposed to the individual in there. Uh, so the person is getting a promotion to a whole different thing. That's not the same as a cost of living raise. Uh, so I just wanted to make that point. Okay, uh, Sandy, could you go on to the legal budget? Yes. So uh, we've also had some major changes in the legal department. Ed Marlenga retired, and we are looking to replace him. Um, so... Uh, in FY20, Ed earned 153365 plus he got a $9,000 stipend uh, for dealing with uh, a lot of the workers' comp things that he did. We have eliminated the stipend and we've reduced the salary to <coughs> one we think will be uh, significantly competitive uh, in order to uh, attract somebody into this uh, position. Uh, we have given uh, <coughs> Doug Heim a bit of a bump in his salary, uh, and a $5,000 step as opposed to the $2,500 step that all other department heads got, uh, to reflect his taking on greater duties within the legal department now that Ed is gone. Um, so that, that is really what the changes are in this budget. Um, the change in his salary means there's a concomitant change in $25 in the longevity amount, but this is all really um, trying to reflect uh, the increased responsibilities that we see Doug having in this position. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, are there any, uh, are there any questions on the legal budget? <clears throat> I have one. Charlie? So, uh, Sandy, are we replacing Ed Merlenga? Yes, we are. We've budget, we have budgeted $140,000, which we think is more than sufficient to attract somebody. And Doug has somebody in mind who I for, won't say who that is, but uh, he has somebody he'd like to recruit. Um, and uh, we will have somebody in that position, both to do workers' comp and, and some of the general legal work in the office. 
So there'll be a little bit more of sharing of Ed's job between the new person and My hand is up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, could, 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 Annie, could you put my uh, new graph on again, please? Yeah, hang on. Let me find it. Yeah. Yep. So <clears throat> you see there the legal. <clears throat> The changes in legal budgets, budget uh, spelled out here, um, the original numbers and the new numbers, the town con <coughs> it's, uh, for the town council, the stipend, and the uh, assistance claims coordinator and the longevity, the longevity changes. Um, so the Bottom line change change is this four eighty six one seventy one. Okay, and the uh, the bottom line of the entire budget is four eighty six one seventy one, which represents at about eleven thousand dollar decrease over the prior year. Okay, is there any other questions or comments on the legal budget? Okay, Sandy, do you want to do public works? Yes, if any, you could move down to the next page, please. Go. Yeah. There we go. Thank you very much. Um, so really to bring everything then in line uh, to get us to the 3.25%, we had um, a surplus, so to speak, of $8,907. And we are... Uh, requesting that the committee vote to put that into the engineering budget. Uh, there's a line item there that um, Mike Rodemarker uses to hire outside uh, consulting engineers or, or, to, or to hire um, extra time from the people who have designed our, um, our projects. Uh, there are uh, times when the department doesn't have enough inside capacity, so they have to use these outside people. And in order to uh, give him closer to what he's probably going to spend, uh, he suggested that this money be added to his budget in that in that line item. And so we would request that you do that. Um, it'll come in particularly useful for the Mystic Street Bridge uh, and for the Lake Street uh, light projects. Okay, uh, Christine, are, are you uh, okay with this? Yes, I am. Okay. <clears throat> are there any, uh, any questions then on the public works change? I think Alan Jones wanted to. Yeah, it, it, Alan? It's, it's really more of a comment and it's, it's the way that um, Sandy phrased it. Uh, and, and just wanted to make it clear that the 3.25% is being treated as a target and not an upper limit. So it seems like if we have a budget that's that ends up being less than 3.25%, that we just add stuff, say, well, where can we spend this money and bring it up to 3.25%? So I'm just making that as a comment. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, we have uh, three budget changes here. And I I'm just have a feeling that what I should probably do is do uh, three roll call votes. So what we're going to do first is the changes to the town manager's budget, uh, which would be bottom line of <clears throat> 783546. Okay, so we're doing a roll call on the town manager's budget alone. Grant Gibeon? Aye. And this basically uh, bring uh, revisits the old budget and does the new one. Uh, Shane Bundell? Aye. John Ellis? Aye. John? Aye. Okay, Carolyn White? 
No. Mary Margaret Franklemont? Yes. Arif Federa? Aye. Okay, Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Charlie Foskett? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Peter Howard? Yes. Uh, Shea Procress? Abstain. Abstain. Daryl Harmer? Yes. John Deist? Aye. Alan Jones? Aye. Annie LaCourt? Aye. Bill Keller? Bill? Yes. I got it. I was turned off. Sorry. No problem. I did the same thing. Uh, George Koser? Aye. Christine Deschler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. Dave McKenna? Yes. Okay, so that was the town manager. And the next vote is the legal budget. Grant Gibeon? I vote aye. Shane Blundell? Aye. John Ellis? Aye. Carolyn White? Carolyn? Yes. Mary Margaret Franklemont? Yes. Arif Padera? Aye. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Charlie Foskett? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Peter Howard? Yes. Shea Pocress? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. John Dice? Aye. Alan Jones? Aye. Annie LaCourt? Aye. Bill Keller? Aye. George Koser? Aye. Christine Deschler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. Dave McKenna? Yes. Okay. And the last one is the DPW, the addition of $8,970 into engineering uh, for, for consultant services. Uh, Grant Gibeon? Aye. Shane Blundell? Aye. John Ellis? Aye. Carolyn White? Uh, aye. Mary Margaret Franklemont? Yes. Arif Padaria? Aye. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Charlie Foskett? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Peter Howard? Yes. Uh, Shea Pocress? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. John Deist? Aye. Alan Jones? Aye. Annie LaCourt? Aye. Bill Keller? Yes. George Koser? Aye. Christine Deschler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. Dave McKenna? Yes. Okay. So that takes care of that. Now, the, the last Warren article that we have is the Fiscal St Stability Fund. Now, uh, Alan, uh, what's the amount that's uh, that we have in going into that now? Um, we have... No, we, you're talking about the override stabilization fund or the long? Yes. Uh, yeah. Calculate it now. Uh, 561,041. Okay, does that, does that include all the changes that we've done tonight? I believe so, yeah. So 561, comma, 041. Yeah. Okay, I think. And you know, wait a minute, Sandy, are you still here? I am. We did. 
we ended up with a somewhat different bottom line on the capital budget, right? I thought we had resolved that, that I, right, I have the same number that you do, although I, I for some reason, am off by a dollar. But, well, it's, but we're it's at 16 million. No, remember, we, the, the number we came up with today was 16 million, 280,134 at the end of our phone call. Yes. Well, that's, that's not what's in the long range plan. The offset, the, the overhead stabilization fund, the 561.041 is based on a capital appropriation of 16,280,134. Just give me a second, opening my file here. Um, could you just confirm that the 16 million 280 134, which that is, I, I agree did with that phone. number. Hmm? I agree with that number. Okay. So, so Al, that, that 561,041 is based on that new number. And I don't know if we need to re vote the capital budget. If we do, maybe Santa can explain why it's a little changed. Well, I, I think we voted the capital budget um, using the different sheet. It was a vote to approve. Uh, right. I mean, it's not, I think it's like $26,000 different. So it's not a huge amount. But uh, Sandy, maybe you could just take a minute to explain what's happened in the capital budget over the last few days. Sure. Resolving as, those. If I, I'll just take a minute. As um, Julie Wayman and I were reviewing our last items for publishing the town manager's financial plan. We went over um, the capital budget and how it related to what was in the long range plan. And we noticed uh, that there were a couple of small differences, both in the non exempt debt service number and in the offset carry forward number that slightly, that changed the bottom line slightly to get it to the 16,280,134. Uh, which I believe is consistent with um, the sheet that I handed out before that is called uh, attachment number four. I think those numbers all line up to that. Um, so, and then, then it does mean that the override stabilization fund deposit should be 561,040. Is that I, I, what you believe, Alan? It's within a rounding error of a dollar. Yeah. It's within a rounding error of a dollar. Yeah. So, so okay. I think so like we're good to vote on that, that number. Okay. And, and Al, if I could just say one other thing. On, I don't know if you've done the rink budget, but we need to, I need to ask you to take another vote on the rink budget. Okay. Um, Let's do one thing at a time. Sure, just want to make sure we didn't miss it. Right. Um, okay, so is the, Alan, do you think we need to take another vote on the capital budget for that 26,000? Uh, it's, it, it wouldn't hurt. So I, so I move $16,280,134 for the capital budget appropriation. Okay, and the difference is in part of the debt the debt calculations? Debt and the offsets, yes. Okay. Uh, do I have a second to that motion? Second. Second. Okay. So um, what we're going to do, and with those changes, Alan, then the amount going into the override stabilization fund is the 561041? Correct. Okay. So I think what I'd like to do is take one vote to modify the capital, the bottom line of the capital vote to what was the number again, Alan? 16 million, 280,134, 16280134. Okay. And how much is that different from the vote before? Uh, I, I don't have it in front of me. It, it, I, I, if I recall, it was about 26,000. Okay, so it's about 26,000. 
So why don't we take one vote to approve that modification to the capital budget so we have a bottom line of 16280134 and that we appropriate into the fiscal stability fund 561041 does anybody have any objection to taking one vote for those two items okay so that's what we'll be doing with this next vote to approve the modification for the capital budget and to vote the 56 it's one own four oh four one until the fiscal uh, override st uh, stability fund. Okay. Grant Gibeon. Aye. Shane Bundell. Aye. John Ellis. Aye. Carolyn White. Aye. Mary Margaret Franklemont. Yes. Arif Federia. Aye. Jonathan Wallet. Yes. Charlie Foskett. Aye. Brian Beck. Aye. Peter Howard. Yes. Uh, Shea Pocress. Yes. Daryl Harmer. Aye. John Dice. Aye. Alan Jones. Aye. Annie LaCourt. Yes. Bill Keller. Aye. George Koser. Aye. Christine Deschler. Yes. Dean Carmen. Yes. Dave McKenna. Yes. Okay, so that was the fiscal stability and for the capital plan. Okay, so the last item on the agenda then is the is the rink. So um, Mary Margaret, have you have a chance to review any change the changes? To these changes that we just talked about, you mean? Well, to the to Sandy has in his packet. Uh, no. Okay, well, Sandy, why don't you go through the changes and we the question? Yes, yes is we have already voted the the rank. Yes. So, uh, so the uh, take will be to re, uh, to uh, bring up again and, and vote it again. So, Sandy, what are the changes from the original budget? There's only one change in one line, and that is in line 5871, which is debt service. And um, that number needs to read $58,881. I don't have the original in front of me. What was the original? It was about two thousand dollars less. It was fifty-six something, and I, I just I don't have it with me because I'm home and not in my office. Okay, so it's a change of about two thousand dollars. Correct. Okay. Do you have any objection to that, Mary Margaret? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so now the uh, arena total expenses will be. Six hundred and twenty thousand three hundred sixty-four matched by the same amount in revenues. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion or questions on that change in the rank? Yes. What was that number again, Alan? Six hundred and twenty thousand three hundred sixty-four for both expenses and revenue. Thank you. Okay. I have a question. Charlie. Uh, where did the additional revenue come from? Um, I just, uh, the revenue, if you look at this, I believe if you could go down to the next page, is there another page for the revenue sheet? It's in ice time, it's an increase in ice time. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is in the uh, revote of the arena with the small uh, two thousand dollar increase in in debt service and counterbalance by ice time. So roll call: Grant Gibbian. I vote aye. Shank Wendell. He had to leave. Yeah. Okay, he's left. John Ellis. Aye. <laughs> 
Carolyn White? Aye. Mary Margaret Franklemont? Yes. Arif Padaria? Aye. Jonathan Wallach? Yes. Charlie Foskett? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. <coughs> Howard? Peter Howard? Yes. Uh, Shay Pocress? Yes. Daryl Harmer? Yes. John Dice? Yes. Alan Jones? Aye. Annie LaCourt? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. George Koser? Aye. Christine Deschler? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. Dave McKenna? Yes. Okay. And and now, just for completeness, there, there was also a small change in the health insurance that was required to balance it out. Didn't we just do the health insurance? No, no, sorry, the health insurance number in the rink budget. But otherwise, it didn't balance. Okay, so the bottom lines are correct. I just wanted to mention that. Okay. Thank you. So I'll consider that vote for it. Alan, I, um, have, a, I have a question. John? <laughs> Sandy, if he's still around? Sandy still there? Yes, I'm still here. Uh, is there any uh, progress on getting a department head for Rec and Rink? Um, well, right now we uh, we're looking, but we uh, we don't have uh, we haven't set up interviews or anything yet. So we still have Bobby Jefferson as uh, the acting. So he's working on a part-time basis as a retiree. Hey, thank you. Welcome. Okay. Um, now, uh, just a couple of comments to sort of end this. Um, obviously, uh, we don't know what's going to happen with the state budget uh, and the state finances. Um, and even some hits at the local level from hotel, motel, and meals taxes. So that's going to affect us. And uh, Sandy, I'm assuming you're taking uh, revisiting that issue. Sure, we've I just been keeping track of that. Um, I and there are a lot of questions out there that I don't have the answers to, but we're watching very closely. Okay, and obviously this this is going to be a substantial impact, or should could be a substantial impact on the state, uh, both in income tax, sales tax, meet at meals, hotel, the whole bit. So um, on April 15th, the House Ways and Means Committee is supposed to be coming out with its budget. And uh, hopefully we will not get hit too hard, um, but we could. Um, and then obviously the House votes at the end of April uh, and then the Senate Ways and Means and then the Senate. Uh, so, so this is a long process and I have a feeling it's, it's not over. Uh, you've already given Alan and I uh, authority to adjust the override, fiscal, override stabilization fund, uh, depending upon what the House does. But I think probably uh, it's very likely that we're going to have to come in for another meeting uh, sometime in late May or early June. The uh, selectmen have postponed the Senate of uh, the election until I believe June 3rd or, or early June and the town meeting would happen after that. Uh, and the town meeting would have to be fairly quick. Uh, so I think uh, I'll try to keep you up to date as far as when our next meeting is. Uh, but my guess is it'll be late May, early June. Plus in June, we'll have to have another meeting for the uh, reserve fund transfers. Uh, but we'll just have to see, we'll see what happens. <coughs> We've got a little money to play with with the 500,000 that we just put in the override stabilization fund. Uh, hopefully we won't have to come back and cut budgets, but that's a possibility too. Uh, so uh, does anybody have any questions or comments? I do, Charlie, Mary Margaret. Sure, Mary Margaret. I, um, so I wanted to say that Christine Bongiorno has been doing in extraordinary amount of work to help keep this town safe. Um, and also Sandy has been doing a lot of work and I'm gonna send out um, 
answers to some of these questions that people have asked and the answers to the problem I had with the COA transportation budget. Um, but I mean, Christine has been so busy that she was actually texting me after midnight. But um, so I say kudos to both of them for all the work they've been doing. Any other comments or questions? Charlie's got his, Charlie's got his hand up. So, oh, Sandy? yeah, I have a question for Sandy. Are 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 we uh, going to be staying within our uh, anticipated town budget for fiscal year 2020 in the face of the current um, changes impacted by the COVID-19 virus? So there are two things to look at, uh, expenses and revenue. We so far have not had any additional major expenses. There have been a few here and there, but nothing really significant. What's more of a concern is revenue. Um, I think in particular, the areas I'm looking at most closely now are the rink and rec budgets because, and in fact, we've had to lay off on the rink side, some of the part-time people who keep the rink going. Um, we, we have not laid off anybody else at this point. And, and I think everybody I'm talking about on the rink side are people generally who have full-time jobs elsewhere. So um, I think this is just some extra money for them. Uh, but I think revenue is a big side. I don't think that we will not have enough revenue to meet our needs in the general fund. What it may end up happening is that we have a shortage compared to what we've seen in the past few years, and that will affect our free cash. Uh, but again, just to reiterate, the spending side so far, we have not had a lot of additional expenses. We may have to subsidize a couple of the enterprise funds, and we're looking very closely at how our revenue will, will affect us. I hope that answers your question. It does, thank you. Will the manager be instituting a uh, hiring freeze at some point? We have, uh, he and I and Karen Malloy have been talking about that. We've held off making any hiring decisions uh, that don't need to be made right away. So I think informally we are looking at that. We, and that's about as far as we've gotten on it, but it is under active discussion now. Okay. Are there any other questions from the committee? <clears throat> okay, the, the last thing I wanted to uh, mention was that uh, for the first time this year, we had a unanimous uh, attendance. Uh, <laughs> so thank you very much for coming. I mean, we've had <clears throat> attendance this year, uh, but this was a unanimous one. It was uh, an interesting experience in doing this. We probably could have cut a half hour out of the meeting if I didn't have to take roll calls. Uh, but uh, I, I argued with the town council and he, he, he wouldn't relent on that. So uh, I'll keep you up to date. I'll let you know when our next meeting is. Um, I want to thank you for, uh, for all your work. And uh, I want all of you, please stay safe and uh, have a nice night. Take care. Meeting thank dismissed. You. Thank, thank you. Too. Thank you. Bye-bye.